All right, guys, you asked for this. So yesterday I told you about the largest trade in U.S. 10-year Treasury bond futures possibly ever, where the seller of 78,000 TY contracts stands to make or lose about $5.1 million for every one basis point. That's one one hundredth of a percent that interest rates move. When I recorded that video yesterday, that position was marking up anywhere from 25 to $50 million. Interest rates have sold off another five basis points, so whoever initiated that trade is probably up another $25 million today on the position. Now, I still don't know whether this was an outright trade or a hedge, but regardless, I'm gonna walk you through the math of how I got from 78,000 TY contracts to $5.1 million in risk. With treasury bonds, we use something called the bonds DVO1 to do this math. A bonds DVO1 is a conversion factor, effectively, that tells you how much money you make or lose upfront for every one basis point running change in rates over the life of the bond. To calculate the DVO1 of a bond, we start with its Macaulay duration, which is just a fancy way of telling us the cash weighted average time to getting all the cash flows from our investment, so all the coupon payments and our principal back. We then take that result and calculate our modified duration, which takes those years, factors in the yield of the bond, so where it's currently trading in the market, and that modified duration gives us a number that effectively tells us the slope of the price yield curve. Now to convert that from a number of years into dollars, we take one additional step, factoring in the actual dollar price of the bond. So if I have 100 million 10-year notes and the DVO1 is 7.5, that means that for every one basis point, one one hundredth of a percent that rates move, I make or lose $75,000. Cool, but wait, I'm not talking about bonds. I'm talking about treasury futures contracts. Futures contracts don't have a maturity. They've got an expiry, and that's like three or six months in the future. And they don't have any coupon payments or principal. How can I figure out it's DVO1? Well, Treasury futures contracts derive their DVO1 from the theoretical bonds that are eligible for delivery at the contract expiry date. For each Treasury futures contract, there's a basket of several eligible Treasury securities that if you don't close out your futures position or roll it at expiry, you would either take or make physical delivery. Of. For a TY contract, the contract that represents 10-year treasury bonds, the basket of eligible securities ranges in maturity from about six and a half years to just under eight years. And of those securities, one will at any given point in time, mathematically, be the cheapest to deliver. Now, we could do an entire year of courses around just this one thing, but think about the CTD this way. If you had to deliver a physical commodity, let's say bushels of corn or barrels of oil for settlement of a futures contract, you would choose the barrels of oil that are the least expensive for you to transport to whomever the buyer is, not the one where you have to run all over and struggle to source it and ship it. Same principle with treasury futures, only we're not calculating shipping costs, we're calculating something called the implied repo rate, again, for another time. Now, there's a standardization for all the eligible bonds so we can compare them apples to apples and normalize for the differences in coupon and time left to maturity between the various eligible bonds in the basket. We apply a conversion factor that tells us what the dollar price on that particular bond would be if it had a yield of 6%. That 6% number doesn't change as treasuries come and go out of the delivery basket and in and out of CTD status. So our futures DVO1 equals the DVO1 of the CTD times that conversion factor. Now you can look all of this up on the CME's website and on Bloomberg, but for our purposes, I'm just gonna ballpark it. Let's say some fictional bond with a five and three quarters coupon maturing seven years from now is our CTD. Let's approximate the DVO1 of that bond at something like 6.6. .6. With a five and three quarters coupon, if it had a yield of 6%, it would be trading at a discount. So let's call its dollar price 99. So our conversion factor is 0.99. So now our futures DVO1 equals 6.6 .6 times 0.99 equals 6.534. That's $6.534 for every one basis point, one divided by 10,000. So let's complete the math here. Our DVO1 of 6.534 divided by 10,000 times 78,000 contracts times the face value per contract, which is 100,000 face worth of bonds equals 5.1 million in DVO1. So there you have it. 
Bond Math Made Easy. If you found this helpful, please hit subscribe and stay tuned for more fixed income market mechanics made simple with us, the Wall Street Skinny.